I'm going to demo how to set up Unreal Engine 4 with physical light units on a real-time or dynamic scene with a skysphere. So I'm going to start with a blank project. And uh, first thing we'll do is let's just make a new level that's completely empty. We'll save that as our demo level. And we'll add a simple scene just with a plane, a couple boxes. Since this is kind of hard to see, let's change these materials. Oh, that's an unlit material. Don't want to use that one. Let's change these materials to. Um, I think there's a. Actually, in the engine content, there's some test meshes. So I think it's called like hiding test or something like that. used by this chrome ball material so let's just use the reference viewer here it is that's some color calibrator so we'll throw in one of these and um, we'll just use gray for the floor now the gray in here this gray ball material um, just for lighting purposes, you see it's like using 0.18 and 0.18 linear is 50% or middle gray, 50% gray once um, it's displayed on screen under certain lighting conditions. All right, so all right, we've got a basic scene. Here it is lit, so you can't say anything. So first I'll add a directional light. and uh, a post-processing volume, because right now all the default post-processing post values are being used. Let's put a post-processing volume around this entire scene. Okay, I also could have made it global. And the first thing we'll do is um, Actually, you can see it says preview there. That's because I'm using a stationary light. So let's change that to movable. So now I have dynamic lighting. Uh, let me get rid of this grid. There. All right, so go back to the post-processing volume. <coughs> And we'll turn off um, Bloom for now, and uh, let's see what we have on Exposure. So we'll just set all these so we can control it. Um, so we're going to disable eye adaptation right now um, by setting these both to 1. Um, actually, I'm going to bring that up now. This is one of the points of what I wanted to show you. So there's you can either go to Show visualize HDR eye adaptation and bring up the HDR viewer here um, or you can enter in the command r dot uh, 
show flag H, um, visualize HDR space one. And um, you can also enable this in the game uh, via a level bl blueprint. You can, in your level blueprint, you can set it up so that it runs, it executes that command and you get the same view. So uh, real quick, before we get started, what I wanna just point out is um, this graph, blue are values to the left or lower values and green are in the middle and red are higher values. And you can see um, there's a small window showing the whole scene. And like right now, all this black area is blue, which corresponds to the low values. And there's a bunch of green in this middle gray, which corresponds to the middle values. And there's a little bit of reddish around the cube and that corresponds to higher values. Um, so the other thing that you'll notice is depending on where I look, this um, histogram updates and um, you can kind of see like where the most, uh, like this is mostly green. So you can see that the gr um, this green bar right in the middle is the biggest part of it. And that's gonna be useful to us later, especially when we have the sky sphere. All right, so um, let's take a look at our directional light. And one thing you'll notice is that the lux on it, it's set to 10. And that's uh, a pretty, that's a low value if you're talking about like physical lights. And so like, let's just look up lux real, real fast. Actually, hold on a second. On Wikipedia, they have some uh, common lux values and here they are right here. So they're saying an overcast today is a thousand, um, full daylight, 10,000 to 25,000 and direct sunlight all the way up to 100,000. Um, and then on the low side, um, we get studio, um, they say typical TV studio lighting at a thousand and then um, family room living lights, 50, so it, it's a wide range, but what we're on right now is 10, which was is right around uh, in between twilight and public areas with dark surroundings, yet that's still lighting our whole scene up. So um, I don't know, the, everything I found out I know experimentally, so if you want someone to th explain the, the theory behind all this, it's gonna be someone else, but I'll just show you what I found. So if I go and, um, you know, crank this up to say like 1000, which is what they call TV studio lighting. It's all blown out. <clears throat> and it's because my exposure settings aren't matching it, but I'm gonna go up all the way to as high as this goes, which is 120,000, but I'll just go to 100,000, which is the top level list on Wikipedia. Same thing, it's still all blown out. You can see on my um, image um, coloration that it's all red. So it's all blown out except for like, you know, the black wrap black background, which is blue, and this bit, which is red. So I'm gonna go back over to post-process, post-processing volumes, and then um, change this min brightness setting on the exposure and max brightness. And those are really confusing to me before I actually brought up this HDR histogram, this visualizer that you can see here. But watch what happens when I shift min brightness. You see, it, it gets this like, this green area fills in here. And basically that's showing you that the area where adaptation will occur. So the reason why nothing happened is because I just told it to automatically adjust exposure compensation when the um, meters red values in this area. But that's not what's happening because I'm all red. I'm, it's reading, it's already maxed out. So what I got to do is increase my max brightness this way. And when I do that, then you can see now it's trying to adjust. Now, even though I've set my max brightness to the highest value, 20 here, and my min brightness to the minimum, which is minus 10, you can see the compensation value is only going to 3.5, even though I've set it way up high like that. And the reason why it does that is because there's actually a setting in project settings that you have to enable for this to work. And so I'm just gonna search for HDR. Nope, that's not what it is. Um, it's like called the range or something like that. Here it is. It's under engine rendering, extend default luminance range in auto exposure settings. So you turn that sucker on and it wants you to restart. 
So we say, okay, restart now. And let's open up our level. Turn on that visualizer again. And now, instead of maxing out at 3.5, you can see it's maxing out at 11.6. And as I move around and look at different parts of the scene, you can see this histogram updating and showing me where the um, values are. And so what you want to do is, <clears throat> because your monitor can't display the full dynamic range, I, I think what's happening is if you can get stuff, all the histogram values roughly under this curve, then you're going to be able to see differences in what's on the screen. If you have things that are over off to the left, it's all going to be blacked out and you're not going to be able to distinguish elements. And if it's all to the right, it's all going to be washed out white. So for instance, if I look straight down, well, this is, excuse me, I forget what I just said. So. Um, Let's go back to post-processing volume now. Take a look at our exposure settings. All right, so I'm also, the speed up and speed down is just how fast the adaptation happens. So I'm gonna increase that a little bit just so we don't have to wait for it um, quite so long. And the next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, wait, double check my light. So here's my light, we're at 100,000 right now. As I turn it down, you can see the histograms lowering because the amount of light that I'm flooding on the scene is less. And so the, um, the light values that the um, HDR visualizer is picking up are less. So it's lower. Now I'm at 4.6. And as I increase my lux, you can see now I'm at 5, 6, 7. Oh, and I might have been at negative 4.6 earlier. Yeah, I was. That was negative. So now I'm at positive 4.6 positive 8, positive 9, all the way up to 12 when I max it out at 12, uh, 120,000 lux. So I'm going to set this back to uh, 10,000, which was the value that they said for an outdoor scene. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is bring in a sky sphere. All right, and now you're like, what the heck? Where is it? Well, if I look straight up, now I can see it because the adaptation takes over. But if you are looking at the scene, which is lit with the super high lux, and then you go and look at this, um, at the same time, you can barely see the sun sticking out there. But if you're not looking at the sun, you can't see anything because the, the scenes, the uh, sky sphere is not bright enough. Now, one thing that's interesting about the sky sphere is that it is unlit. And it has to be in order to work with the skylight, which we're going to add in a moment. So um, what we have to do is, um, well, first, let me show you uh, something that's pretty useful. So when I'm looking at just the sky, you can see down at around um, this value down here, two, negative 2.5, I get some values on my histogram. And that's, this is telling me everything in my scene right now is at these values. When I start low, um, moving the camera down and some of these other objects start coming into the scene, you can see like there's other values that are higher that start coming on. And then you can see I have like two sets of values, some over here and some over here. Now, um, just based on the amount of screen real estate that's being sampled right now, I'm going to guess, and I think I'm right, that this one, this um, stack of histogram values on the left is the sky sphere, which is all black right now because it's all the way to the left over here. And that the values that are all white are the values to the right of the histogram, which is these in the scene right here. Um, and then, so if I, what, what, you, what we want to do is bring these two together. And so the way I'm going to do that is to boost up 
um, the values coming, the color values coming from this unlit sky sphere. So if I switch to unlit mode, you can see everything, no problem, right? Um, so first, first thing I'm going to do, um, I'll connect my directional light to the sky sphere, so it like automatically sets it. But I'm actually not going to use that. Um, yeah, I guess it doesn't even matter. I'm going to disconnect it actually. Because what I'm going to do is um, go back to lit mode and you're going to see I can't see anything unless if I stare straight at the sky, then um, eye adaptation will adjust the exposure compensation so that you can see it. If you look at the scene down here, you can't see them both at the same time. So what I'm going to do is on the sky sphere, go over to the overall color value. Uh, first, I'm going to uncheck colors determined by sun's position because I'm going to manually drive everything in here. So, and then go to overall color. And then what we can do here is boost this um, value right here to kind of like make it HDR value. So like if I say 10, you can see I've just boosted up these values in here. I'll go back to one. See now they're over here, it just shifts everything to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep boosting this value until I can get these two sets of histogram values closer to each other. So that's 10, 20, 40, 60. So it's pretty close right now. So now I can see my scene and the background at the same time, or sorry, my scene and the sky sphere at the same time. And the histogram showing me the values are all, you know, relatively close. All right, um, next thing we're gonna do. Uh, on the back here, we have uh, no color, and so what we're gonna do is use the sky, the skylight for that. The skylight samples values um, oops, from far away, like which would be in the sky sphere, and then uses that to color parts of the scene. So it's kind of like the reflection that you would get from the color of the clouds and whatever's in there. If you have an HD uh, RI, um, like a cube map or something, um, it'd sample from that. So now I, I've got a little color on the outsides. Uh, there's my shadow. I can adjust. The skylight has um, its own intensity value. And honestly, I don't know this is in a different unit, some, I think, CD per meter squared. I think that's Candela's per meter squared. I'm not sure how physically accurate all this is. I just adjust this um, using the histogram to get um, shadow uh, shadows not too dark. So like, and you also don't want to bump it up too much because it'll start washing out everything. So like if I set this to 100, you can see it's, it starts to look like an unlit scene. Everything's just like flat. So I'll knock this back down to a one. My shadow's kind of dark. I would like it to be a little bit lighter. Try two, try three. And then you can also see these values down here. This is probably the shadow, this little peak right here. Move this around and see what happens. So if I set it to one, two, three, you can see my shadows moving up just a little bit. I think that's pretty good. I have it just set at three right now. And this seems to be the, um, real, if you crank up the lights from the um, sky sphere, not the lights, but the overall color um, value that you've boosted, I think that it also increases this. They're kind of related. So once you get the relationship set up, um, you can adjust them both together. Let's see if this is true. Everything I've told you is a lie about that. All right, so this is completely separate from this value right here. 
<clears throat> okay. So, and that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Um, so we got, just to recap, physical lighting units right now set at 10,000 lux, which is like a, um, out, uh, let me see what, what was 10,000? Full daylight, not direct sun, so not exactly. So if we wanted to simulate direct sun, we could boost it to 32,000, so I can do that. 32,000, let's see what we got. That still looks okay. That's boosted all the way up to the max. So if I go all the way up to uh, 1,200, then it starts being difficult to see the sky. But if I set it back to 32,000, it's still, it's still not bad. If I wanted to, I could boost up the sky a little bit to match it. There. And then just one other minor thing. If you see the disk, the sun disk, and you're like, man, that looks pretty bad. Um, that's because I disabled the bloom on the post-processing volume. So if you just turn that back on, get a little bloom on it. And if we um, want there to be more bloom on the sun, but we don't want to, um, you know, increase our global bloom so that everything is blowing out, we can go to the sky sphere and just change the sun brightness right here and get more bloom just on the sun. And that does not affect the lighting. That's just what that unlit sky sphere looks like. It might affect the lighting slightly, just in that that's changing how the skylight sampling, but it's not really noticeable. So I'll just show you. If I go to the sky sphere and mess with the sun brightness, knock it all the way down, move it all the way up, not really anything's happening. See, not even this value right here, because I think it's just getting its value from where the directional light's pointing at, not where that sun is on um, the sky sphere. So let me boost it up a little bit. There we go. Now you can see I'm seeing all sorts of stuff at the same time. I'm just keeping an eye on the histogram to make sure everything's under the swooping part of the curve. Because if I have to look at something where the values are too spread out, something's going to be black or white. I won't be able to get um, all the colors visible at the same time. So that's my long-winded explanation of how to set up physical lighting.